Hey guys, Trevor Boone from Emerald City Guitars. And today I have a 1959 Gibson ES330T. A lovely guitar. So this model, instead of having the two P90s, like a lot of the 330s or casinos you see, has one in the middle, which audibly gives you kind of that, exactly what you expect in between the bridge and the neck, a really nice kind of medium warp that still picks up some treble brilliance. So really cool configuration. And again, as you can see, you know, you got plenty of space down there. So unless you're really, really using your fingers and dig it in, you might notice it, you know, getting in the way. But for most guys, it's totally cool. I also use these guitars on the couch all the time. They're just super light, really just easy to approach, and acoustically, they are kind of half the volume of an acoustic guitar, so they're really enjoyable just to kind of pick up and play. The guitar is all original except this ABR1 bridge. It would be a post-1962, so it's a little bit later, still a very collectible, really nice piece of hardware. Not sure what the story is. When it came in, it had that already on it, and then we're gonna leave it because it's fine, it's good. Again, the 1959s are really cool because they share that same profile that a burst would. So to get you know this historical year of Gibson in a somewhat more obtainable price is pretty appealing to me. We're gonna be plugging through a 1964 Fender Vibroverb, the big 15-inch speaker, black panel amp that Fender is really well known for as far as Steve Ray Vaughan, John Mayer, all those cats played it, lots of headroom. I always kind of think it was a little bit of like the precursor to the Dumble. Just tons of headroom, tons of clean, an amazing reverb. Should be a cool combination. So we have Nick Martin playing that today, and let's get to it. Mm -hmm. 